All right, we are back. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into some more detail on the port forwarding. Now, if you haven't seen my other two videos, you're going to see two little pop-ups here on the screen. One to go back to the original video, which shows you how to set up your bucket server with some common plugins. And then another video that we just released that shows how to do your port forwarding for your Cisco, your D-Link, and your Netgear routers. Just some generic setups that hopefully you were able to, to then use as an example so you could set yourself up. But the one problem that you're going to start to have, and it's an annoyance, but it's a problem that we can fix. And that is anytime your cable modem or DSL modem is powered down or maybe your provider goes down, there's always a chance that when you reconnect with your cable modem or your DSL modem that you're going to get a different public IP. So that number that you gave all your buddies is going to change. But what could happen also is your wireless router could give a different IP to your computer, in which case that port forwarding that you did is going to be different and therefore your users aren't going to be able to connect. You'll be able to connect locally, but they won't be able to connect from the outside. So you have to go back and redo the port forwarding. So those two things are a real nuisance to have to keep monitoring or fixing when they occur. And it won't happen a lot, but it'll happen enough that it would be nice if you didn't have to. For an example, I use these techniques that I'm going to show you, and I've been running my server for for almost a year now, and uh, I haven't had to, at one point, change anything on those fronts. So let's just go through a little example on how things actually work. So here's a common setup. You've got your computer, uh, you've got your connection to your cable DSL modem, and your internet connection out from that think of this right here as kind of where your ISP is. So many of you probably don't have this basic of a setup because in this case you may not have a router um, firewall. You may just have a DSL modem plugged directly in. If this was your situation you had to do no firewall configuration because you don't have one. As soon as you unlocked your Windows software firewall you were able to uh, have your friends connect. So the only real issue you would have would be is if your real ISP, uh, IP changes. But what happens when you turn your computer on in this example is your computer needs to get an internet uh, IP address. Now it could be a local network if you're using a router or in this case it would just it would actually be a real uh, IP from your uh, provider. So what happens is you turn your computer on and it sends a request out saying is there a DHCP server out there and if it sees one it says please give me an IP. Now a DHCP server without trying to get too technical it's just basically a system running that hands out available IPs to clients. So when you pay your cable modem or DSL provider uh, money each month they basically set it up so that when your cable modem or DSL modem is turned on it will allow it to give you an IP so that you can actually get on the internet and have have a, a live connection where you can actually do things. So they run a DHCP server that gives real IPs to their clients. So what happens is you turn your computer on and boom you get an IP. Now this is just a fake IP I made up and in this situation that IP is what your computer has. But that's not a very common um, setup. This is a more common setup. You've got your cable DSL modem and you got your wireless router. So when you turn your wireless router on, now what happens? It sends a request out to your cable or DSL modem, which goes to your internet provider, and it tells them, it says, hey, I need an IP. So your cable DSL provider says, sure, here's your IP, and the wireless router says thanks, and it makes that what's called its wide area network IP. So that's your real IP out to the internet. That's why like on the back of your most cable modems, or I mean most uh, wireless routers, you'll see a port list at WAN port, and that's what you plug into your modem. Now your wireless router probably has three or four other ports on the back that are basically the local area network ports. So what happens also, when you turn this router on, not only does it get its WAN IP, its real IP from your internet provider, it also sets up its own IP for the local area network. 
And this is that private network that we talked about, that Class C network. It could be a 192.168.0.1 like this. could be 192.168.1.1. So when you turn on your computers, be it if you have three computers in this example, one or, or 50, they are either connected wirelessly to this router or with a wired connection or a mixture of both. When these computers get turned on, they have to ask for an IP and they come over here and they ask this router which actually has a DHCP server on it too they say can we have an IP and your router is basically set up to give up a, a, a certain range of IPs in this LAN port range this class C range so it'll say okay I'll give you 192.168.0.100 I'll give you 0.101 I'll give you 0.102 but remember now we've got two DHCP servers. We have the DHCP, DHCP server here on the wireless router and we also have the one kind of out here on our ISP. The ISP one gives us the real world IP which goes to our wireless router and our wireless router's DHCP server gives IPs to our local area network. So this is why you have two things that can change. This DHCP server could give this computer a different IP if it's turned off and it turns back on some other point in the future. Uh, so in which case you know your your port forwarding to this computer will fail or your cable provider could give you a different real IP and which case the IP that you give your buddies has just changed. So what can we do so that we don't care if this happens and we don't care if this happens whereas this one changes or this one changes. Alright, so what we're going to do now is how can we fix, let's, let's take the approach first, how can we fix so that our computer always gets the same IP. Now you could go in to your control panel and you could go into your network, wherever here it is, and you could change the settings um, on your local area network. You could come in here and go to properties, you could scroll down to the TCP IP settings and you could hit properties and instead of letting it obtain an IP automatically which means use the DHCP server you could change to this and hard code an IP in but I don't really recommend this I prefer to do it where we do it on the router so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our router we'll go to a D-Link one for this example we're going to go to advanced and we're going to look to see if we can find might be under setup network settings. Okay, here we go. So here's that DHCP server I talked about. And right now it's enabled and you can see it's set to give out IPs to all the computers that we plug into this router or wirelessly connect to this router. It'll give a range from 100 to 199. So basically you've got 100 IPs that this uh, wireless router will give so you can have up to 100 computers hooked into your router if you try to go over that limit then it's not going to work. Now you could change this so it gives a, a, a bigger range but this should be plenty. Now the problem we've got is maybe we turn our computer on maybe we get a hundred. The next time we turn it on maybe we get a hundred one. It shouldn't change quickly. I mean you can see here the lease is going to last for 1440 minutes and you could go in here and change this time and make it some extremely long time but eventually it's probably going to lose the lease to that IP and the next time you turn your computer on it's going to get a new one. So what we do is you can see here where it says DHCP reservations. We can add a DHCP reservation. So let's put one in and we'll call it Minecraft server. And then it wants to know the IP address. So real quickly if I don't hit the wrong buttons. So real quickly let's bring up a command prompt and let's type our favorite little command IP config. So here you can see our IP is 191. So we want to make sure we always get 191 because we've already previously in our other videos set our port forwarding to send all Minecraft traffic to 191. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to say we want this computer to always get 191. Now here it's got an option that says MAC address and we're, 
we're thinking, okay, what, the, what is a MAC address? Well, what a MAC address is, every network adapter, be it your wireless adapter, be it your wired adapter that's built into your computer, they all have a unique ID, kind of like a social security number, and it's called the MAC address. If we type ipconfig slash, and that's a forward slash, all, it tells us much more information than it did before. We still see our IP address, we still see the subnet, the gateway, and all that, the DHCP server, the DNS server, things, some things we didn't see before, some things we did. But you can see here, they have an entry called physical address. That is your MAC address. Microsoft chose to call it the physical address. A lot of uh, systems will refer to it as your MAC address. So you can see this series of numbers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to type those in. Now generally you type these in without the hyphen. If for some reason it, your router doesn't take it and it expects the hyphen, go ahead and put it in. But you can see I typed this string of num letters and numbers. This is in hexadecimal so that's why you'll see letters too. Um, type those in and I hit save. Now what we've done is we've told the DHCP server from now on anytime the system with this MAC address which is this computer here asks for an IP don't just give it any random one in this pool give it this one and that's all you have to do your IP should never change so that from now on our computer will always get the same IP so our port forwarding will work always. So that's half the battle. Alright, so now we're going to handle the next part of the battle. How do we handle the situation where our ISP gives us a different IP? This, that IP we got with IP Chicken and we gave it to all of our buddies? It changed. How do we get around the fact that we don't want to go tell our buddies every time to, you know, here's the new number, here's the new numbers. We want to be able to give them something that they're always going to be able to use, plus we don't want to pay for it because we're cheap. So what we're going to do, there is a company called DynDNS.org and I'll link this in the description. So we're going to go there and they have DNS uh, options. And we're going to come down here and where you can see they have a free DynDNS option. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say get it now and we're going to basically come up with a host name and we'll just assume that Minecraft is available but it's not and we're gonna pick DynDNS.org because that one seems to work the best with most routers or at least in my experience so what we do then is we scroll down here there's an add to cart button I don't want to do that because it shows my IP and it's one more thing I have to block out on the uh, video but suffice to say you add this host name and, and this domain to the cart and you check out and it's free it'll say no dollars you'll register for free an account and you'll give them a password when you're done you'll have a Dyne DNS account now the way this works is almost all routers have the ability to communicate with Dyne DNS and what your router will do periodically is it'll look at its WAN address so it'll basically um, it'll basically look here and say what's my IP and it'll say oh, it's 89 12 2 32 23 and then it'll basically whip a, a connection over to DynDNS and say hey this is my IP and DynDNS will say okay you're the Minecraft account that was set up we will remember your IP so that anytime somebody goes to minecraft.dynedns.org they go to this IP here this 8912 so basically you're going to tell all your buddies hey my uh, connection address to put in your Minecraft when you say multiplayer um, you know connect is minecraft.dynedns.org and your buddies will type that in and they'll get there and what happens if this changes well when this changes your router looks and says oh hold it I got a different IP than I had before and it contacts dynedns for you and tells them hey this is my new IP so that when your buddies reconnect they still get there so it's very simple, very easy. So, you know, get a host name that's, uh, or 
so get a host name that's that's unique. You, you know, you can't have something that somebody else has already used, and it'll tell you if you, if it's invalid. Pick a host name that you like. You can put anything you want in there. You know, don't make it too complex, or your buddies will hate it. Go through the cartridge or the shopping cart process. It's free. Get your account. Once you get your account, you're going to go back to your router. And I believe on the D link it's under Tools, Dynamic DNS. So you're going to enable it. You're going to pick your provider. You can DynDNS.com is the same as DynDNS.org. So you're going to put in that one. And you're going to put your host name. So let's say we got Minecraft. You're going to put in your username that you signed up for on their site and let's just say your name is your name and you're gonna put your password in it's probably one two three four five since everybody uses that and you're gonna hit save and all that you've done then is you've set up told it okay router connect the Dyn DNS's server uh, update my IP information to them so that anytime somebody goes to minecraft.dynedns.com or .org that it gets to my server and what we've done now by doing that is we've taken care of the situation that if this changes our buddies can still get to our server and if this changes our port forwarding still gets to our computer so let me know if you have any problems with that or any questions about that if you have any other setup or configuration ideas for videos like this that you would like let me know uh, now that I've got all this taken care of, I'm going to continue to move forward now showing you all kinds of different plugins for Bucket that you can install. But if you can think of any other setup issues you'd like to see, let me know. If you'd like to see more plug or certain plugins, let me know. Uh, also, if you'd prefer to see how to do this on a Mac, if you'd prefer to see how to do this on Linux, let me know.